Hey friends, welcome to Truth of Physics. In this video, I will discuss on the thermodynamic potentials. Basically, in this video, I will discuss on the Helmholtz free energy. The expressions in this video, I will uh, derive the expression of Helmholtz free energy. There are three thermodynamic variables. Uh, number one is Helmholtz free energy. Number two is Gibbs free energy. And number three is our enthalpy. Now, uh, for uh, to cover all the threes, I have to make three videos. So in this video, I will discuss only on Helmholtz free energy. Now, in mechanics, you will remember that in mechanics, our work done is equals to minus of gradient of any scalar. And that scalar, suppose phi. So that scalar is known the potential, right? That means in mechanics, if a work is done, then the then due to this minus sign that is uh, this represents that if work is done, then the potential will decrease. Okay, this is a so by analogy, we'll find we'll try to find thermodynamic potential. So our aim is to find some physical uh, conditions uh, under which this uh, analogy that means under which the uh, thermodynamic functions can be expressed with the analogy of energy th that is with the analogy of this relation in mechanics okay so that means this is potential or potential energy. The two terms potential and potential energy is different only in our electrostatics. But in mechanics, in thermodynamics, all in these things, the potential, the term potential and potential energy is same. So Helmholtz free energy or Helmholtz potential or free energy, all the three terms are same and which is denoted with F. So later in this video, I will define what is F and what is how it is defined okay from Clausius theorem we know that the integration from a state i to a final state f of del q over t which is equals to not only equals to but less than equals to s final minus s initial entropy s means entropy now i think that you all know this now this less than sign holds for only irreversible process if the process is irreversible and this equal to sign will hold only when the process is reversible process so this is our theorem so we will consider here in our class in our today's class we will consider an uh, isothermal process okay isothermal process then this is isotherm process now then what happens then I can just uh, take this T outside of this integration and multiply it with this side then what happens del Q what will be the answer of this thing so this will look like this and from here I can write this term del Q del Q that is change total change in this process from I to F okay so and del q is what del q is equals to from first law thermodynamics i can write del q is equals to du plus dw du plus dw okay now this is equals to this is less than equals to t into tsf tsf minus tsi i can write du uf minus ui plus dw which will be less than equals to TSF minus TSI. Now from here I can also write uh, DW one side and the another things another side. That is this will be uh, TSF um, UI minus TSI minus U F minus T S F, right? I can write write this. So this means 
if I denote this term, these two terms, these two terms with an another function or another function f. So f is what? f means this u minus ts, u minus ts. So this will be what? This will be f2, this will be f1. So dw is always less than equals to f2 minus f1. Now this new variable, this new variable f is called the Helmholtz free energy or simply free energy. Now why it is uh, compared with energy, right? Why it is compared with energy? Let us understand this. Now I can write this thing. Okay, this is one. This should be one and this should be two as this is the initial, right? So I am denoting it with F1 that is initial and this is final F2. Now I can write this, del I, I can write F1 minus F2 with minus of del F or minus of DF, right? That means DW is less than equals to minus of DF. That means one another case of this is DW is equals to minus of DF for an reversible process and you can find the similarity from here and here. In our classical mechanics, the term this, that means the potential energy, the energy rolls the play, the same role is played by the Helmholtz free energy in our thermodynamics, right? So that's why uh, it is defined first free energy. First it is defined free energy and then after it is named with Helmholtz free energy or Helmholtz potential. Now, so okay, this is this concept clear that why it is called the free energy F. Now, <coughs> very interesting thing that we have got this relation or defined that F is equals to U minus Ts. And F is what? So, okay, so U is equals to F plus Ts. So you can see that U, our internal energy of that system is uh, the contribution of U comes from two parts. One is from Helmholtz free energy. That is what? That is the energy that uh, with that we can work, right? Which energy can be converted into work or uh, simply saying that which energy I can use in our work, okay? So that means this is what this is available energy for work, and this is what this is latent energy T S, which is unavailable for work. This is also energy, but this is unavailable energy. And available, and that is the reason that as our uh, <coughs> as day passes, one day as day passes, all the nature natural. Uh, things, natural uh, processes, uh, the most of the natural processes, that means uh, approximately all the natural processes are our uh, irreversible process. And we know that for irreversible process, the daily is, is always equals, to, always greater than zero. That means our entropy of the universe is always increasing. That means this term, Ts will always increase. So one day what happens? One day when the dayless universe will be maximum, then what happens? Then all the energy as this is fixed. So all the energy will become our unavailable energy and there will be, F will be become zero then. That means we cannot use, we, we have no energy for uh, our work. We cannot use the energy for work. That is all the energy can be, will be converted into unavailable work. And this is known as the thermal data of universe. So that is another topic. I have uh, just briefly uh, explained that. Now one more interesting thing is that del W, we have calculated del W is less than equals to minus of del F, right from here. So, so uh, that means minus of del F means F I minus F one minus F two minus F2, right? Now, if we consider a process of isochoric process, isochoric means where uh, del V is equals to zero. That means 
I want to say that the process in that process dw is equals to zero. So overall the process will be first I have uh, considered the process is isothermal and now we am I am considering that the process is isochoric. That means this process is isothermal isochoric process. So for an isothermal isochoric process from here I can write that f1 is always less than equals to f2 for an isothermal isochoric process. That means for an for this type of process the Helmholtz free energy will the final Helmholtz free energy okay I have again done the mistake f2 when this will be 0 f2 will be taken here. So for this type of process the final uh, Helmholtz free energy will always be less than the initial that means the final Helmholtz free energy is always decreasing the Helmholtz free energy is always decreasing and the stable state will always be in the minimum of the Helmholtz free energy which is defined which is described by this equation this is the significance of this equation of this inequality says us that the uh, stable state will always be the minimum of the Helmholtz free energy, right? That means, uh, so go back to our classical mechanics. Uh, there, you have drawn a graph that looks like this. This is our potential energy graph, and you know that the minimum of that potential energy graph is what the stable equilibrium point. So here also the minimum of the Helmholtz free energy graph, Helmholtz free energy will be our most stable. So from here I can say that Helmholtz free energy is what Helmholtz free energy is a thermodynamic potential of an iso, uh, isothermal isochoric process or simply the Helmholtz free energy is a thermodynamic potential in constant volume okay so in this video i have discussed these things if you have enjoyed this then subscribe this channel and hit the bell icon to get the notifications of my upcoming lectures on various concept clearing topics of physics and share this video with your friends so take care of yourself thanks for watching